Because under those conditions, what happens is not only does your hemoglobin take on oxygen in your bloodstream, your plasma will get oxygen saturated, which means you could run for hundreds of miles without getting tired. I think uh, before the flood came, things were just a lot different, okay? Probably double the air pressure, increased oxygen. Oh, it'd just be a lot different. It would sure make you heal up faster. How many of you remember baby Jessica that fell down in the well in Texas back in 87? She was down there for two and a half days. It was an amazing rescue. When they finally got her out of there, lots of her body had turned black from lack of circulation. One doctor said, we have to cut her leg off immediately because it's all black from no circulation. Another doctor said, hey, before we start cutting things off, let's try putting her in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. Normally, they used to use these just for scuba divers. If they come up too fast to get the bends, they pressurize them, you know, to get rid of the air bubbles in the blood. They put Jessica in one of these chambers, filled it up full of pure oxygen, and pumped it up to double normal pressure. Within a few hours, her leg turned pink. They restored circulation. In West Germany, they're treating stroke patients with hyperbaric oxygen and getting incredible healing from strokes. In England, they're treating multiple sclerosis. Many diseases around the world are now being treated with just hyperbaric oxygen, adding air pressure, finding unbelievable results. Probably the whole world had that before the flood. You wouldn't need a chamber. You just, the whole world, you're living in it the whole time. In India, they're treating leprosy with hyperbaric oxygen. Here's a kid being treated for cerebral palsy with a hyperbaric oxygen hood. There's a clinic in Dallas, they give you hydrogen peroxide in your water to drink, and it helps most diseases get better. Dr. Kimori in Japan started raising tomato plants with a special filter that filtered out UV light. He has got a machine that follows the sun all day, and it sends light down, fiber optic cable, and he sprays light on his plants. They set it up for Expo 85 in Japan over there, and someone told me that he also pressurized carbon dioxide to the stem of the plants. I haven't been able to verify that, but I've had several folks tell me, yes, that's correct, but I've searched and I can't find the facts. I was in Japan, didn't get to talk to them. But, uh, see, plants breathe CO2, and if you can pressurize carbon dioxide to the plant, of course, they're going to get more of what they need to grow faster. They expected Dr. Kimori's uh, tomato plant might produce 10,000 tomatoes. It kept growing and growing and growing under this special light, got to be 40 feet tall. When it was two years old, it was only 16 feet tall and produced 900 tomatoes. I was debating a lady, a uh, lady, nothing, a woman, uh, Eugenia Scott. She's the president of an organization designed to keep creation out of schools. That's all they do. I was on a radio debate with her one time, and she said, Dr. Hoven, there are 80 separate layers of coal in the Midwest. She's right. She said, if you look at the amount of coal in the world, the entire biomass, that means all the plants of the world today, could not possibly be converted to that much fossil fuel. She's right again. She said there had to have been an enormous amount of time. Ah, now right there is where she's wrong. See, she's assuming the world today is like it was before the flood, and that's a common mistake people make.
One professor said, Hovind, if there was a worldwide flood, where did it all go? Where did all that water? I said, oh, it's still here. It's out in the oceans. They're huge. There's enough water out there right now to cover the earth a mile and a half deep everywhere. But this canopy of water over the earth would block out UV light, it would block out X-rays. See, the sun puts off a lot of stuff besides light. It puts off X-rays and gamma rays and beta rays. And X-rays particularly are dangerous. But you go to the hospital and get an X-ray, and he puts this weird machine on top of you, and he says, okay, now take a deep breath. Hold it. And he runs out in the hall. He says, hey, wait, Doc, come here. Is this machine dangerous? He says, no, it's harmless. He says, if it's harmless, Doc, how come you got a lead apron on and you're running out behind a lead-plated wall? The sun is x-raying us every day of our life, except on cloudy days. Because water stops x-rays. Before the flood, they lived over 900 years. One guy travels around. He claims to be a creationist. He says, you know, they didn't really live to be 900 years old. They counted every month as a year. You have to divide their age by 12. Wow. That's an even bigger miracle. You know, uh, Enoch was uh, 65 when he begat Methuselah. Two of these guys were 65. Let's see, divided by 12? He's five and a half when he became a daddy. I don't think so. No, they were living to be 900. Yes, they really were. Okay. And were there really giants on the earth over 10 feet tall? The Bible says there were giants in the earth in those days. I think it says that because there were giants in the earth in those days. Here's me by Robert Wadlow, tallest man in this century. That's a statue. He died in 1940, but he's nine, almost nine feet tall, eight foot eleven and a quarter. There's Robert with his dad and his brother. Family portrait. Big fella. Robert was five foot six when he was five years old. When he was 12, he was the world's tallest Boy Scout at seven foot four. He weighed 500 and some pounds. Doesn't look fat, does he? We would say, man, that guy's gigantic. Well, I think maybe before the flood, they got even bigger than that. Here's a skeleton of a man, 11 feet, 6 inches tall. Well, long, not tall. He's laying down now. But... But uh, I bet you didn't hear about the skeletons found in Indiana back in 1879. Nine foot, eight inch tall. Now, why would they not tell you about that in your public school textbook? Could it be that somebody wants you to believe a theory which says, man, used to be itty bitty and we're getting bigger and better. And, you know, this kind of evidence kind of upsets the theory, so we'll just kind of ignore that. Or did you hear about the ones in uh, Virginia City, Nevada? Two skeletons, nine feet tall, found in Virginia City. Or the one in Humboldt Lake, Nevada, ten foot tall. How about the one in Indiana? They found eight giants ranging from eight to nine feet long wearing heavy copper armor. Through the bungling of the diggers and the disinterest of the museum establishment, the discoveries were scattered and lost. Why would the museum not be interested in eight and nine foot tall skeletons? How about the 12 foot skeleton found by soldiers in Lompoc Rancho, California? Or the 12 foot skeleton found in Tucson, Arizona? The guy had six toes, a long hair, and a bird-shaped headdress.